is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. Nope. Just this is stop. a sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. Happy Thursday, everybody. Hey, hey. I thought I was gonna get the crowd going. Yeah, got me. Got you. Yeah. Thanks, Al. Raising the roof for you. Hey. Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime you get someone to raise the roof, it's okay with me. I've noticed that when we say hello and you're like, welcome everybody, I immediately do this and then quietly feel ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Like Erica's raised the roof? Yeah, no, I do that myself. <laughs> I don't I know do. if that's Erica's raised the roof. I'm going to defend Tori. It Thank was you. today. I'm I sorry. just did it. Yes. I'm sorry. Today in Tomorrow, Tori, you could pull the Arsenio. <laughs> oh, woof, woof, woof. Woof? I said tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> You have time to work on it. <laughs> okay. All right, let's Ooh. get to it. We're starting today with Arsenio Hall. No, I'm joking. <laughs> with Britney Spears, she and her husband, Sam Esgari, officially separated. This comes after a rumor fight when Sam confronted Britney over cheating allegations and then moved out. Britney and Sam got married last summer in Los Angeles. The two had been together since 2016. This was Britney's Instagram post. Yesterday, after the news broke, she talked about wanting to buy a horse named Roar. <laughs> So what do we think of, let's just dive right in. What do we think of this? Uh, her response as well as the cheating allegations in Brittany as a whole. That's a lot to swallow. I, you know, listen, I was very much leave Brittany alone. And I still am. Really? You want to know why? Because I got my own life and things to think about. And this woman doesn't appear to be uh, endangering anyone other than quite potentially herself. Um, obviously, she's a very famous person and people have a very vested interest in speaking about her. We're obviously no different. We're leading with a story about Britney Spears. So for anybody to say that one side of, you know, is right and the other side is wrong when there is a very concerted effort to profit off of her name by everyone, I'm very much like, leave the woman alone. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't, I really. I don't know if that's a good idea to leave her alone. And I, what are you gonna do, Al? I don't, it, it's no different than like, we're not saying that about Bruce Willis. We're not saying leave him alone. I mean, he's what, a, he's that, a, that's not even, he's been diagnosed apples, though. I, uh, uh, look, we can get in a format. No, I think that we're talking about two people that have something going on mentally that makes their judgment impaired and makes it easier for them to be taken advantage of. But we don't Bruce have is, to say leave Bruce Willis alone. No one is no, violating his privacy. No, I'm using him as an example of what he's going through. He's right also now. not putting out videos spinning around on right, a pole. I'm just saying it's not the same. But if he would, no, I, I get it. Yeah. Do you, do you see, I, I see what you're saying. I'm, I'm saying we, uh, it's our job to protect those that are the most vulnerable. And everybody up here wants the best for Brittany, even though we'll never meet her. It's because we're human beings. And when you see somebody that is, is, is that vulnerable, it's just, it's, it's, it makes you want to look away. And I think, Jeff, I, I, I can't speak for you, but I know uh, you and I connected a lot with this because I just, every story we've done, and we've done maybe 20 or 30 Brittany stories, not once, Erica, have I been like, that seems like a rational decision. That seems like something somebody I know. Would I would push do. back on that I when she I tried don't. to end her conservatorship with Jamie. I think we have to make it clear that there's two things going on at the same time. One, the conservatorship with Jamie, her father, was really enmeshed and somewhat abusive, according to a judge who saw that and ended it. What we now okay. see, and I stood up for Britney a lot and leave Britney alone, is I, I don't think she's compass mentis or is in all there. I'm not a doctor, but I think she needs another conservatorship. She read minds. <laughs> <laughs> It just means like you can't sign a contract, right? But um, she needs another conservatorship, or as we talked about in the break, a board of some kind that only represents her, independent of the Spears family. Get out of that family. Because as we all know, something's going grabby, grabby, and something's going wrong there. Get rid of the family, get an independent board, set it up so she's not alone, so we feel like she's supported. But at this point, I agree. I think she needs some and help. But how likely certainly is that shouldn't to come happen. I think Jamie. that's ideal, but well, I don't know about this imaginary board. That's not I, that well, crazy. No, I don't. I, uh, imaginary board is not really. It, it, the board isn't imaginary. Actually, I think that it, it makes the most sense. I think you it need, does too. I'm you just need saying some. We're... There cannot be someone who has final say on everything that is happening with Britney Spears. Not her as a person. Not her as an entity. There has to be some sorts of checks and balances at every single turn because you're talking about someone who's worth so much money right, right, and right. is so popular. You know, everyone knows who Britney is. The other thing is, we can stop with this fake concern. No one's concerned. No one's stopping their lives 
in order to make sure that Britney is okay. All I'm saying is every time we have this conversation right now, there's a reason why we're opening with a Britney Spears story. So let's not act like we're exempt from this conversation. Mm -hmm. We are not. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying, keeping it all the way 100, if we are going to talk about Britney Spears and the idea of should she be left alone, should she not be left alone? It also starts with the idea of, hey, if we aren't talking about her, if we aren't watching every single thing that comes through the vein about Britney Spears and people aren't profiting, profiting off of it, then we are no longer having this conversation. Now we are having the same conversation as Bruce Willis because there's nothing to gain by having the conversation any other way. So everybody can miss me with fake concern. Nobody's concerned about anything other than themselves, period. All right, well, I, let's I, see where we're at with this next story because it I involves kind of the same that. thing. <laughs> we'll talk about it at the break. We're learning more details about the blindside subject, Michael Orr and his lawsuit against the Tui. So a lawyer for Sean and Leanne Tui now say the couple is willing to release Michael from the conservatorship he was placed under when he was 18. In his lawsuit, Michael claims he always thought he was adopted by the Tuies and found out about the conservatorship in February of this year. But it comes to light that Michael wrote about the conservatorship in his book back in 2011. He wrote that since he was considered an adult by the state of Tennessee, Sean and Leanne would be named his legal conservators. The author of The Blind Side, which the movie was based on, is also speaking out, saying the Tui family didn't see a major profit from the film and Michael was cut, or Michael's cut was placed in a trust for his son. Meantime, oh there's only a half hour show. <laughs> Meantime, there are reports that Sandra Bullock, who played Leanne in the film, is devastated. The film may have been based on a lie. Great. Um, let's get it. I don't know. I see this slipping away. I was totally on Michael Orr's side, like, and it broke my heart that he felt like he didn't know he was adopted or he he thought he was adopted and then he came out in February and said I just found out that broke my heart now there's other things leading me to say he's not telling the full truth and he's playing with my heartstrings now because I was on his side and now back in 2011 he knew he wasn't adopted but now he's using that to his favor but I, oh go ahead I, I, don't, I don't like that aspect of it yeah well and then how convinced were you in the first place that that might have been the case if one person saying something to the contrary? But he said is, it and he knew. And I, I understand what you're saying, but here's the thing. Both things can be correct. He could have not understood what he what the nature of the conservatorship versus the adoption or the nature of his legal um, ties to this family was he could have not known that 12 years but ago but it's written in his book that he but understood he could have not understood it anytime this is why when we we always talk about legal situations and you're like we feel very differently about it anytime you bring me something that has been vetted has gone through multiple attorneys and you present it to me and I do not have someone who of equal um, legal knowledge to represent me and to go through every single point of what I am signing, that is predatory and problematic. So it could be true that he had some indication of what was going on, but didn't have the same knowledge as the people presenting with the documents at that table. So you're telling me, th I understand that. I don't understand when I sign contracts for here, I don't look at everything. But if I was being adopted and living with someone, I'd be like, hey, mom and dad, am I your kid? Am I adopted? But that's I think, not the nature of what that was, though. What do you mean that's not? The, that's it's a not, family. No, you don't, you don't Jeff, ask that? Adoption, no, no. That, that this is getting into something else. That's not the way. I think it would be a very I understand beautiful. your point. I know where you're coming from. Yeah. I think someone would have the wherewithal if they had no education whatsoever to say, someone, hey, am I adopted? Are you my parent? If he had someone who did not have a vested interest going through this process with him, and that's where the problem lies. If in that state, 18 is the legal cutoff where you can no longer be adopted or considered a guardian of this person, then he should have had some type of a GAL, a legal liaison, someone to say, this is what you are signing and this is what you're entitled to, they're entitled to, all of that. I think the argument is he never had someone like that. So it would be very easy for him not to understand what the legal ramifications of what he signing, was signing were. All right, all right, we'll be right back.
understand what I'm saying? Or no? Am I talking crazy? It wouldn't. No, I, I think we're. Oh, I, I, so oh. we're talking about the legal, like legal versus like practical. Yeah. When you're talking about adoption. And what Jeff is saying is like, wouldn't it come up in other contexts? And my point is, no, it wouldn't come up in other contexts. And the reason why it generally doesn't come up in other contexts, unless you're talking about legal matters, is because when you are in the child welfare system, you will see children who, like in our case, we had a sibling group of five uh, children in child welfare. During the course of our, um, our time with them, which was three years, there were multiple people who they referred to as mom and dad. We had to be very specific about who we were in the nature of the relationship. So those things aren't legal. Those are matters of the heart. And right. if you think like, okay, now I'm a part of this family legally, and someone has told you, yes, this is the nature of your relationship, then I can't see that coming up in any other context. Now, when it would come up, especially for someone like him who has some degree of means, is he now has a child, and that child has been provided for by the state or the trustee. They made a trust. It, well, the Tuies made a trust, um, put the money in for that child. If Michael has an estate for his child and there's an estate like basically a bridge, like I have an estate plan planned, my parents have an estate plan, and then we put those things together for the betterment of our family, that's when something like that would come out. Uh, I, I don't know what you're saying. I'm just saying. I know what you're saying. Welcome back to DBL. This should be fun because I haven't looked at this. <laughs> NBC is expected to be hit with the lawsuit claiming reality stars on some of its shows are being mistreated and exploited. Bethany Frankel, who got her start on The Real Housewives of New York City, has been vocal about wanting reality stars to unionize. She partnered with the team of lawyers who are applying to sue NBC, which owns Bravo, the network that airs the Housewives franchise, of course, and other reality shows. She claims... Uh, the claims did not mention specific shows, but said reality TV subjects were denied food and sleep and given alcohol to make them look mentally unstable and that the show covered up acts of sexual violence. Meantime, <laughs> in a separate lawsuit, NBC is being accused of mistreating contestants on the reality show Love Island USA and a contestant on the second season of Netflix show Love is Blind is suing over inhumane working conditions and paying cast members less than minimum wage. Mm, I could see it. I, I mean, I've it. experienced it to a certain extent. I, I was a host on that old show MTV Made. Uh, that was big at the time. It was an hour long show. I was the star or the one of the stars with this kid and I got paid for over the course of that summer 2,500 bucks. And I've done multiple shows like Blind Date and other ones where definitely there's some booze involved. Remember Bad Girls Club? Remember mm. you could tell they were all tuned up because they want some excitement. There was and violence I mean, there. Right, and there was a lot of violence. You're exactly right. And I think that this is what they're talking about. And if you don't unionize, you will be exploited. Let me just tell you something. I could not love you more right now. Bethany Frankel has always been someone I look up to. Right now, she is like a shining goddess. To mm. unionize the reality stars, and I'd love to hear your opinion on this, is only the only way to safely protect them from a booze filled, no money paid exploitation. And what she's doing with Mark Gregaris, I hope I'm saying that. Garagos. Garagos, the one of the biggest lawyers out there, is saying unacceptable. And Andy Cohen, you got me in this. I will take you head on and say this is an unacceptable working condition and they deserve better. I think they do. Yeah. Uh, oh. You Listen, know. I, I could probably profit from this in yeah. some sort of way, yeah. right? L looking back. But I, I think... Would you have wanted to be protected? No, I, I'm not, I, I don't know if I'm necessarily down for unions, to be p perfectly honest with you. The SAG actor union that I'm in kind of took advantage of me, I'm going to be honest with you, during this whole thing, because I wasn't a, a, an actor who made enough money to get their Benefit. benefits from right. it. I just was someone paying into it. It was almost like a shakedown when you're like, hey, mom and pop shoe store, you can't afford to pay your bills. Well, you're gonna pay me anyway. And then when you make it big, we got your back. Well, there was no chance I was gonna ever do that, right? We're out of time, cool. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs>
germs can lurk almost anywhere, not just on our bodies, but on non-living objects as well. That leads us to tonight's claim. Is it true that the backpack is one of the germiest things that a child brings to and from school? Our sources for this verify are Dr. Mandy tibbles fotek a pediatric hospitalist with University Health and associate professor with UT Health San Antonio, and Chris Pritchett, an associate professor with the Department of Microbiology at East Tennessee State University. Dr. Svatek said backpacks are a perfect place for germs to be transferred from one child to another. The hands touch the backpack, and if several individuals are touching the backpack or for instance, lunch boxes go into the backpack. You are exchanging items with friends or getting your hands on different things, putting them in your mouth. All of those items can take bacteria and then transfer them to the backpack. Pritchett echoed what Dr. Svatek had to say with, there's lots of nooks and crannies in a backpack and because there's lots of nooks and crannies, they pick up some of the bacteria on the floor whether it's on the bathroom or schoolroom floor, then there's always the potential that they're bringing some of that home. So yes, it is true. The backpack is one of the germiest things that a child brings to and from school. Dr. Tipples Fatek also recommended wiping the backpack down daily and making sure your child carries sanitizer as well. Welcome back to DBL. Last week, we told you about the medical emergency involving botched reality star Terry Dubrow. He had a mini stroke while at dinner with his family and only went to the hospital after his wife hounded him, chased his Uber, and recruited his friends to call him. Earlier, we spoke to him all about it. Take a look. We're yes. so happy to see you here and that you're well. I was going to say, we're happy to see your face right now. I want to ask you, Doc, why do you think, and this is speaking from someone who had to push their mother, you were so defiant to go to the hospital. Is it because doctors make the worst patients? Is that true? I don't think so. I think it's a general desire to deny something really bad happening. When you look uh -huh. at studies, and I have done this since this happened, of people who have strokes, literally 89% of people who are displaying signs of a stroke either refuse to go to our hospital or their caretakers, rather than calling 911, are calling relatives and there's a delay. And wow. as you probably know, you have about four hours That's to right. get to the hospital Yikes. to dissolve that clot. And if you don't, you're going to have a major stroke. Wow. Terry, I get like you being reluctant because I don't know if it's a male thing or something like I'm fine. Don't worry about it. But what did your friend say to you that actually changed your mind? So I had three doctor friends of mine, very highly trained surgeons, call me. Two of them said, listen, Terry, you know it could be a TIA. Get it checked out. It wasn't until the third one called me and said, don't do it for you. We know you're healthy. Do it for your wife, Heather, and your son who are traumatized watching you go through this. Mm. They're not going to sleep. They're going to worry about you. And as soon as they appealed to me about making my family feel better, I went, okay, and I redirected wow. the Uber. Thank, thank goodness I did. Oh my God. Mm. Thank goodness. So happy to see you, Dr. Debro. Love <laughs> your wife, Heather. I don't know if you've heard, but she's actually invited me to your new home in L.A. <laughs> 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 On behalf of my girl Heather and everyone who really felt very passionately about this story, myself included, because here's the thing. I have someone, my husband, in my life who I know for a fact I would have had to chase down in an Uber too. How th this its incident has created so many life and death conversations in so many households. And I just want to know how you're repaying your wife for gaslighting her. <laughs> because let's be clear, you were, and she saved your life. So I want to know how this repayment is happening. <laughs> Well, I'm happy to say that I had just bought her a oh. piece of jewelry yeah. because had I not 
paid for it already, the size of the piece of jewelry would have had to go through the roof. So I'm good for a while. Let's get to the good stuff. Season eight of Bosch is airing. Uh, we have to ask you, do you have a favorite transformation from this season? Let's go to work. I do. You know, oh. you guys just showed it very quickly. This is a season. Yeah, there's a reason a for that. Season. We took seven <laughs> seasons of experience and applied it to cases that we never would even have tried before. But there's one, a woman from another country who had a tumor growing from her eye all the way down to her jaw. She was taken at the local university by the team of plastic surgeons, the operating room. They tried to fix it. It bled so much. They closed oh. her. We call it a peak and shriek. And they said, forget it. So she had three kids. She's young. She has a store. She tries to make a living, but she's got this giant growing tumor. We took her on. We felt there was no other way that she was going to live her life with this. And wait till you see this. And this pretty much characterized the entire season. Cases that we never would have tried before that we now used our experience to fix. This is a dramatic season. It's a very emotional season. Mm. Wow. And we had problems that of our own that we had to fix. Wow. wow. All right. I can't Oof, wait. Life altering. Yes. Erica's like, mm -hmm, clearly, yeah. problems you yeah. had to fix. <laughs> I'm coming back around, Dr. Dubois. <laughs> We're glad you're here, man. We appreciate you. We're so glad to see yes. you. DBL Nation, new episodes of Botched are airing now on E! You can also stream the season on Peacock. Thank you again, Terry. We'll be right back. So Bye, glad Terry. you're okay. So Thank good. you guys so much. Absolutely. Well, Trump's fourth indictment included violations of Georgia's RICO Act. RICO stands for Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations. Some people online have claimed it's supposed to be used to take down mob bosses. So let's verify. Was RICO created to prosecute the mob? Our sources are the Federal RICO Act, the Mob Museum, the Georgia State RICO Act, and three Georgia law firms. The answer is yes, RICO was created to prosecute the mob. Congress passed the law in 1970. Mob bosses in particular were hard to take down because they were rarely directly connected to individual criminal acts. RICO gave prosecutors a way to overcome that by going after the entire organization, rather than one member at a time. In New York in the 1980s, then U.S. Attorney Rudy Giuliani famously used the law to lock up many of the biggest names in organized crime. Of course, more recently, Giuliani became part of Trump's inner circle and is actually now named in the indictment as a co-conspirator. So is the same law he used in the 80s now being used against him? Not quite. Trump and his associates are not being prosecuted under the federal RICO Act. Fonnie Willis, the district attorney in Georgia, has charged them with violating that state's own RICO Act. That one was passed in 1980 and has some key differences. For one, it's not often used to prosecute mobsters. Willis brought up rapper Young Thug on RICO charges last year, accusing his record label of being an organized street gang. That case is still awaiting trial. And before that, she charged several public school teachers under RICO following a standardized test cheating scandal. The state RICO law can be used in this way because it's much broader than the federal version. Federal RICO is notoriously difficult to prosecute because it requires an extremely specific set of circumstances. Georgia's law is actually well known for being less specific. The DA has said that even when it's not used for mobsters, Georgia RICO is a useful tool for painting a fuller picture for juries and taking down larger conspiracies. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. Are you skeptical of headlines and what you see on social media? We are too. The Verify newsletter helps you distinguish between true and false information by answering your questions. It provides fast facts on trending topics, spotlights major stories, and even includes a daily fun fact for all those trivia buffs out there. Get Verify's fast facts delivered every weekday to your email inbox. Go to verifythis.com slash email to check it out. Self-driving cars could be safer, but slower. Let's connect the dots. A study from NC State says people want self-driving cars for two reasons improving passenger safety, and reducing the amount of time we track. But turns out we might not get the best of both worlds. While autonomous driving can be safer, new research suggests it might be a lot slower than you're used to. It's all about connection. In order for self-driving cars to work, vehicles have to communicate with each other and traffic control systems. And that takes time. But it could get better. 
Researchers at NC State say as more cars get connected, the quicker they'll be able to move and anticipate movements of other cars. And that is Connecting the Dots. Welcome back. We've got some great products from our friends at Morning Save. Check them out. Steph, what do you have for us today? Hi, Tori. Hey, DBL Nation. I am so excited to show you the deals today. As ever, they're fabulous. And I can't wait to show you our, our first item today because it's diamonds. Oh! We've got the brilliant diamonds, one tenth carat TW diamond halo stud earrings. So this door buster deal includes one pair of earrings in a gift box. Guys, there's a limit on these of three per customer. Oh, I can't wait to hear the price. They're gorgeous. So normally they are $149. Get out of there. We've got it for $20, Tori. That's saving 87% on diamonds. Oh my gosh. Now look at this, Tori. This is so much fun. We've got the Malibu Sky signature print satchel wow. with a wallet. Ooh. So this deal includes one satchel available in four colors. Normally, these are $148, but we've got them for just $33.99. That is saving 77%. Next up today, we've got the L Lux Cordless Rechargeable Auto Curler. Ooh. So this deal includes one auto curler that will help you style your hair safely. Normally, this is $150. We've got it for just $24.99. That's saving 83%. And then check out our last product today, Tori. We've got the Glow 24K 3-in-1 Neck Rejuvenation LED Device. This deal includes one device that is safe and non-invasive. It will give you a spa-like treatment from the comfort of your own home and for a fraction of the price. Wow. Normally, this is $349. We have it for $49.99. That is saving you guys 86%. Head on over to MorningSave.com to snag these amazing deals at, and you saw the lowest prices, or you can even scan the QR code on screen. It's going to take you directly to these products on Morning Save's website. Steph, thank you so much. Wow, Tori, you did a good job on that one. Though. Really? Yeah. You're not, it's not rolled in sarcasm? No, I just, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a Tori, jerk. you just take the compliment. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. say know. it again. Say it again. All right, welcome back, uh, Tori. You know what? You did. You looked fantastic and did a great job. I thought so. Blast. Thank you so much. You as well. Easier. <laughs> better, as well. Better, better. As well. You look good, kind of. <laughs> <laughs>